The issue of sex education has been one that has hit the headlines all over the province of Ontario recently as the Ministry of Education released a new sex education curriculum to be rolled out this September. This new lesson plan is causing many parents to bring up the sex talk a lot sooner if they haven't already. Here to talk to us a little bit more about how to have the sex talk with our children is Jonathan McKee, author of More Than Just the Talk, Becoming Your Kid's Go-To Person About Sex. As well, we're joined by two parents, Andrea Zyersma and Janice Rett. Welcome all. Thank you. Good to be so with you. this is, you know, it becomes a touchy issue at times, right? Maybe a, you know, issue that we all um, are not always prepared for, but we have to talk about. I want to hear from you two ladies. You both have children. How have you talked about the issue of sex with your kids? How about you, Andrea? Um, well, myself personally, I took it back to when they, not sex, but even just the consent. Mm. From when they started going to people's houses and playing, what's okay, what's not okay. Yeah. It's okay, you go to the bathroom and you don't allow anyone to follow you in there. It's just starting what's okay, where the touching, just started it very young with them. Yeah. I feel it's important because kids can be taken advantage of. And as they, go, as they get older, the questions get a little bit more. And my eldest, who's 10, and she's still very innocent, <laughs> um, just kind of as, she, as she's ready for things mm -hmm. is what we're taking it as I go. So you're so listening keenly listening. to what she's saying yes. and being able to impart wisdom. Yeah, on it's important. It's important they know that they can trust you and they can confide anything into you. So I tell my kids, you can talk to me about anything and everything. Yeah. And that's the key is communication. Yeah. How about you, Janet? Well, my husband and I decided early that we really wanted to be the first point of information for mm -hmm. the kids. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we wanted to participate in was the Passport to Purity. So for each of our daughters, we have three girls. When they were 10, we took them away for the weekend to cover. Uh, they do a fantastic job of giving you the five subjects. And then you get and to... And explain who, who does Passport for Purity. That's what Family is that? Life Ministries, okay. uh, Dennis and Barbara Rainey. And what they do is they make it very easy for you. It's a nice little package. They give you the CDs that you listen to, but you get to tailor the weekend for the child that you're with because obviously the children are all different, so it's kind of nice to have it around what they love. So now recognizing that um, we wanted to make sure we were answering their questions when they came up. So we did have some other cursory conversations earlier on, and we used a little book uh, by Jim Burns called How God Makes Babies. So that was just a really natural way to discuss that because that's usually where their questions came. But then having the passport to purity gave us an unlimited amount of time almost to begin the discussion, not just to have a one-time talk, of course, mm -hmm. but to just let them know this is our, our launching point. We've discussed, we've covered all these very important things, and from now on you can come and talk to us about any of this. And that's where we find ourselves now, is just the, the, them coming back for further clarification mm -hmm. and new questions. I see you nodding your head, Jonathan. This all sounds good to you. It's good stuff. I love just hearing about ongoing conversations because this isn't just one conversation. This is, this is, and sometimes it's sad because you hear parents that aren't doing like this where they're saying, come to me anytime. Let's keep talking. It's like, okay, I'm going to go buy a curriculum. I'm going to do it. Done. Checked off. Don't have to do it anymore. And no, it needs to be an ongoing conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those points, Jonathan, that we need to make sure that we're following as parents and when we're mm -hmm. talking about sex education? Uh, I know, you know, in your book, you talk about girls being different from boys and, and having to address some things differently with each sex. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, guys are much more visual, not saying that girls aren't at all, but, you know, and so they're going to be affected more as they are walking around in the mall and they see, you know, they pass Victoria's Secret and they see the, you know, un, you know, the girl in the underwear right there and we can watch and maybe our eight-year-old won't be, might be, ooh, you know, our 10-year-old might be interesting, you know, but bizarre, I don't know what I'm feeling mm -hmm. and the 12-year-old gawking, you know, and as we start to notice that, we can, you know, not over react but have conversations about that um, with our girls um, you know the same thing is you know as they're dressing we can be talking with them about the way they dress how it affects guys oh. and um, you know modesty and that kind of stuff um, sexualization is you know the American Psychological Association talks about um, this how our society likes to sexualize everybody and value them just for their sexuality and to be able to talk with our daughters and let them know you're so much more than you know just being some sexy thing you know wow you're pretty but man you've got an awesome singing voice and what an awesome spiritual leader you are and you know so many good things we can build into our kids besides just you know being sexy yeah you know? yeah 
Jonathan brings up a great point about the modesty, um, and that was actually one of the reasons we started to have these conversations a bit earlier with our daughters about sexuality, because modesty by itself doesn't have a lot of context, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until they started to understand some of those dynamics and the realities and respecting men and, and what yeah. they would be doing to gentlemen that the modesty conversation all of a sudden made a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you're in the Word, it's neat because, you know, if you're reading together Scripture and you get to those passages that talk about, like, fleeing sexual temptation, we with our girls can talk about, hey, here's where we can really help the guys flee if we're not wearing super low cut tops or short skirts or whatever that that would help them you know and help them understand what that's like uh, I mean I got two daughters and I remember you know and we live in California mm. and you know bikini season and it's interesting I mean so many parents will do so many different things no we only let them wear bonnets and full-fledged gowns or others like you know and we just did a thing where we said hey you know when we're at my parents have a pool so it'd be just our family at the pool I'm like we're at the pool you know go for it do the bikini stuff like that I'm like but when your guy friends are around I want you to be real careful how, and, and, and equipping them to start thinking about those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So. And let, let's talk about the boys because we've kind of honed in on the girls. Yeah. But you, you see with the boys that you need to remind them that uh, humility to spot the lies yeah. in our society, to spot the lies that are there, uh, a foundation of truth and knowing when to flee. Talk about those and why that's important. Yeah, yeah. I, I say the humility thing, and it's so hard because our society is so me, me, my rights, my, and to talk to our you know, I mean, to, you know, being someone who loves Jesus, um, you know, talking to our kids about the, the model that Jesus gave, and he's such a humble guy and humble servant leader. And um, when our kids can understand a little bit more, especially raising young men to be, uh, to be servants and to be humble and not just thinking of themselves, but thinking of others, I mean, that's an important part of raising men. Um, we so often talk about what to flee from. Sometimes we're saying, okay, run away. I think one of the questions is, well, run where? Yeah. And so what are we running to? And, um, and that's where I always want to be able to give my kids something to what, what they're running towards. And you think of, uh, you know, the Hebrews passage of, of, you know, let go the sin that hinders and fix your eyes on Jesus. And, run, you know, so that's kind of a cool thing of, hey, here's where our focus can be. And um, this is just part of those ongoing conversations we can be having with yeah. our kids. Is that something you would recommend fathers be more having with their sons or mothers? Well, and it's hard because you're thinking of our single moms that are out there yeah, raising kids too, true. you know. It, those conversations yeah. happen all across the board. But yeah, there's, it is, I tell you, there's such an important role for both. The mother's got that nur nurturing role, but dads, dads have an important role with the daughters too yeah, because I heard somebody say something that scared me once. He said, you know, guys, hug your daughters because if you don't, someone else will. Yeah. And I thought, wow, you know, that, that's a, you know, so dads, big time, you know, building your daughters, but dads also being an example to your son of how you treat a woman, how, how you know, I, I want, you know, my kids, as they grew up, I hope that they saw me not only loving and respecting my wife, but, but you know, I couldn't get enough with her. I'm all, always like hugging her and kissing her. And she's always pushing me away in the kitchen yeah. stuff. So we're, we're kind of always having that fun, laughing, you know, banter and stuff. They, yeah. they know dad's crazy about mom. They know that dad goes overboard on Christmas and Valentine's Day with mom. And even a few packages that she's all, oh, I'm not going to tell you what that was like, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. So I want them to know that romance is fun and love is fun. And hopefully they saw that example. And one thing you said in this book, Jonathan, which I thought was so key, is that dads need to comment on their on what their daughter's wearing. Oh, you look so beautiful today, or yeah. oh, that makeup looks really good, or you know things like that. Yeah. Because yeah, they're gonna hear it from guys outside, Absolutely. but they need to be able to hear that stuff from their fathers as well, oh, and know that sure. that's a point of oh wow, my dad actually thinks I'm beautiful, oh. and I don't have to look for it anywhere else. Absolutely, or bringing back to the modesty. Last summer, my daughter started, you know. She, she looks like a little woman now. Yeah. And, and it was the summer that my husband's like, those are too short for you to wear those shorts. Mm. <laughs> Don't wear those now. <laughs> Amen. Good you job. Know? Good Start job. Start them yeah. young. Start them young, dressing well, modestly. Yeah, and, we can, and we can build on them positively. Uh, I mean, you know, here, and being, being in Canada, when I landed, I literally, right across from the hotel, was an Aldo shoe store. I know my girl's sizes. I literally went over and bought two pairs of shoes because I was like, they were, it was a great sale. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's like knowing what they like, knowing their style, and, and, you know, some dads make the mistake of, you know, uh, like we have this 
JCPenney and when you walk out of there, there's this Sephora, which is really like a place that no man wants to be, all makeup, perfume, whatever. It's, but I, it's a woman's paradise. It is, what are you it talking is. about, Jonathan? But the thing is, they'll come over and they'll be like, oh, try this shade, what's this? And they'll be like, Damask Rose. <laughs> And I'm sitting there, I'm pulling out my phone, and I'm like, Damask Rose, I write that down. You know why? Because in the stocking, I, want, I don't want just like, hey, uh, you want Buffalo Wild Wings, right? Uh, you know, I, I want to know what it is that they like. So, so I, I love, you know, building into my girls and valuing them, and, you know, it's part of being a dad. This is all about paying attention, and I, I know we, you know, we started off talking about the new curriculum, and uh, I know a lot of us are going to be talking to our kids probably a lot more intentionally this coming summer knowing what's expected in September. How have you ladies maybe adjusted maybe what you're going to talk to maybe your younger kids about yeah. as this curriculum gets closer? Educating myself on what they're going to be learning on is really important mm -hmm. and normally our school sends home what they're going to be teaching them so mm -hmm. I hope they still do that again so that as a parent I'm on the same page with them and we're, we're on the ball with talking to it in a sensitive way. And talking about the issue ahead of time. About the issue of time. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Janet? Well, that's I think the main thing is to talk about it ahead of time. Yeah. And so having that curriculum available to us will be helpful mm -hmm. so we can know what's going. We just really value being that first point of information Absolutely. because I think whoever gets first strike at the material is probably the most significant thing our children will hear on that matter. So mm -hmm. we do want it to be us. So making sure that we're the first ones to have that conversation. And then we're not too worried. It's like we were talking yeah. about. If we can give them God's beautiful design for marriage yes. and let them know that this is perfect and exciting within God's framework, and then we can back that up with a model of a beautiful, healthy, joyful, attentive marriage, then I think that we can create such a compelling uh, argument for God's design for human sexuality that they'll be able to sniff out the counterfeits, and I don't mm. think they'll be defrauded by them. Yeah. Jonathan, I know you're American, but you've probably you've heard a lot about You're this a lot topic, about this, yeah. A lot. How do we, as parents of faith, approach this as we know that our children, some of our children will be learning some of this stuff for the first time? Yeah, you know, a lot of people saying, I don't like this, and, and you know, and I, I think it's good to share your voice about that and stuff, but if, if this curriculum rolls out and your kids are in the school, then I guess the thing that you gotta do at that point is say, okay, knowing that this is gonna be out there, um, this, let's look on the positive side. Here's an opportunity now where we as parents can really make sure we're having ongoing conversations. And now there's almost accountability to, I love doing what these ladies said, you know, let's look at what this curriculum is teaching. Let's uh, talk about, you know, it, it's an opportunity to now share truth, you know, and, and it'll be neat because maybe they'll actually share some stuff. And if they're sharing, hey, here's what a condom does. You can look and say, hey, look, you know, wow, here's, you know, of these four diseases with these two, it actually shows that it's quite effective. But with these two, it's quite ineffective, huh? Now, let's not talk just physically. What about emotionally? What about spiritually? Because they might talk about, you know, the science of it all, but... I, I doubt they're gonna bring up the morality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can really talk about the morality of it all and talk about God's great design. Not that sex is the naughty thing, mm -hmm. but wow, sex is this awesome thing. And let's look at what that relationship looks like between a man and a woman when they get married and they get to share this awesome gift yeah. for the rest of their lives together. This is cool. And then, and then you'll be able to keep your eyes open when you're watching that TV show or you're watching something and something else comes up and, huh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now they're sleeping together outside of marriage. What, how does that work? What do you, and then ask questions. What do you guys think, you know? And start to just keep those dialogues happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't run away from the conversation, but yeah. have the conversation. Absolutely. And bring it back, bring to, it Je back to Jesus. Bring it back to Jesus. Well, that's a great way to end this conversation. Thank you all for joining us. Again, Jonathan has two books here, More Than Just the Talk, Becoming Your Kids, Go to Person About Sex, and the handout kind of book that you can give your kids, right, Jonathan? Yep. Yeah, and this has uh, more information, and it's a great, great resource. Thanks again. And you have a website, Jonathan, as well? Yeah, thesource4parents.com. That's with the number four, thesource4parents.com. Great, great stuff. And, uh, yeah, thanks again.